In this video, we're going to talk about Samsung HWS 50B review. Before starting the video, like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel for future updates. Samsung had a lot soundbar lineup in 2021, spanning various models to cover the market. While their top of the line options garner most of the attention, their lower end versions offer more inexpensive choices for individuals on a budget who want to boost their TV's audio. In our Samsung HWS 50A review, we will look at one of their inexpensive S-series devices. Samsung Mini Series make it hard to compare them. The Q-Series is their premium selection and contains the latest innovations. The S-Series, where the S50A belongs, comprises single-unit soundbars for individuals with limited budgets and space. The HWS 50A is between the HWS 60A and HWS 40A. The HWS 50A is a 3.0 channel soundbar that supports Dolby Digital, DTS, and DTS Virtual, X, USB, and Bluetooth playback, Q Symphony, and Tap Sound, and can be expanded by adding rear speakers and a wireless subwoofer. The HWS 50A seems simple but it has many features and expandability choices to be customized. The main unit costs $219 and can be expanded from there. What about its performance? Discover. The S-Series design is unlike the Q or A-Series. This applies to all three products, with minor differences due to features. If you want to place the soundbar in front of your TV, bear in mind that it doesn't have IR repeaters, so if your TV's IR sensor is low, it may block the signal. Measure first to be safe. The S50A's design lakes straight lines and sharp angles. The soundbar has a light gray fabric grill and seems like a squashed tube. The side have curved plastic covers. At the top are the normal power, volume and source selection buttons. These physical buttons protrude slightly from the grill and are well spaced to avoid pressing the wrong one in the dark. We are critical of soundbar's functional displays. Some low-cost and not-so-low-cost soundbars use an array of LED light indicators to show what the soundbar is doing. Unfortunately, the HWS 50A uses LEDs, just like the Polk Audio Sigma S4 and Denon DHD S517. These five LED lights are in front of the built-in buttons. Different combination in hues represent soundbar functions. This is the least feasible way to use a front display because if you don't recall the combination of the light colors, you will have to check the instructions every time, which is annoying and impractical. At the back are a few connectors in a central inset and two air vents, one on each side, used to amplify low frequencies. With its low weight and specific mountain holes, it's easy to wall attach. The HWS 50A is lacking. It's a tiny soundbar with a lovely curving design and Samsung class build quality. For the price, not much is expected. The HW Fabric S50A's grille isn't removable, but Samsung tells us what's within. For the two main channels, there are two racetrack mid-drivers, which are popular in low-profile devices, and a single spherical tweeter for each channel that handles most of the upper frequencies. A signal spherical full range center driver improves the soundbar's conversation. The HW networking S50A's option are minimal, which isn't surprising given its low cost and simplicity. In the back central inset or an HDMI port, digital optical audio input, micro USB port. The HDMI supports ARC but not EARC because the soundbar can play Dolby Atmos. Micro USB can play audio from external storage. You will need a micro USB to USB converter cable, as noted in the handbook. A tiny hassle, but because you would need an extension anyway, there is not much difference. Bluetooth wirelessly streams audio from your smartphone to the speaker. Without Wi Fi, the HWS 50A lacks online capabilities. Belt in buttons provide basic HWS 50A control. The main control method is the provided remote, which is similar to the one remote used in many Samsung TVs and soundbars. This one is functionally identical to the HWA650 and other Samsung devices. The two buttons above the navigation control are for source selection and Bluetooth pairing, 
while the three below are for sound mute, mod selection, and treble, bass, and audio sync. Left is primary volume, right is woofer. We enjoy the one remote, but a design makeover like their TVs would be welcome. Very few buttons manage all operations, making it easy for casual users who don't desire sophisticated controls. Without Wi-Fi, the soundbar can be controlled by voice commands, and there is no dedicated app. The soundbar's limited functionality may be controlled with a provided remote, which isn't a problem. Most of the sound options are the same as before. No substantial changes. However, the unit has fewer than the more expensive Samsung's models. As such, we get standard, which outputs the original audio mix as is, music mode, which is in front oriented, adaptive sound light, which analyzes the content audio and gives the optimal sound feel, and DTS, virtual X, which simulates surround audio without actual physical speakers. There are no dialogue or night mods, but Samsung includes dynamic range control, DRC, for Dolby Digital Finds. DRC reduces loud sounds, but can distort the sound, so use it judiciously. Soundbar has Bluetooth. You can stream audio from any Bluetooth-enabled mobile device. You can connect up to two Bluetooth devices to the soundbar at once. Lastly, you can link it to your TV via Bluetooth if your TV supports it. You can connect a TV and a mobile device simultaneously, or two Bluetooth devices. Try to connect a third Bluetooth device when two are already connected will disconnect the first two. Bluetooth has auto on and off. Depending on Bluetooth status, the device turns on or off. If no Bluetooth signal is detected for a while, it turns off automatically. With an inbuilt USB connector, you can play audio files from an external storage device. It supports most popular audio formats. If you use USB playback often, you will have to reach the back of the unit. This one's micro USB makes cable use mandatory. If wall mounted, you can't move the soundbar to find this port. We wonder if Samsung developers try to connect the micro USB port when it's mounted. If you are a fan of surround sound and the integrated DTS Virtual X isn't enough, you can buy the optional SWA9100S surround speakers and SWA-W500 wireless subwoofer to make a 5.1 channel system. The supplementary kits are straightforward to connect. However, the surround speaker kit still requires cords. They're not truly wireless. Samsung's Q-Symphony allows your soundbar and TV work together to output sound from all the available woofers for enhanced immersion. This only works with Samsung TVs, not others. Top Sound lets you mirror music from your phone by tapping it on the soundbar. Your phone must support Top Sound. For a low-cost soundbar, the features exceeded our expectations. It's simple but has enough thrills and can be expanded, making it a good bargain. The HWS 50A is easy to operate and simple like other lower tire models. Even if you have no previous knowledge, you can set this up in a few minutes because there are no difficult configurations or settings. Everything is minimal. First, you must connect the soundbar to your TV. HDMI's ARC feature works. You can also connect it by optical port or Bluetooth. Bluetooth will limit the sound quality, so use it only as a last choice. Plug and play soundbar HWS 50A is great. No setups or collaborations needed. If you just want to connect and use, you will adore it. This model lacks in-depth collaboration options. The S50A's front output is adequate but not spectacular. It's a good upgrade from your TV, but for $200, the S50A doesn't deliver the cinematic experience of better, more costly devices. Side-firing woofers are only employed in the S60A, hence the S50A Lake sound extension. You can hear sound outside the soundbar, but not as much as with side-firing drivers. The S50A's front-facing sound wall was restricted, but the output was clean and powerful. At the typical volume levels, the system was balanced, but pushing it will cause it to lose cohesion. Due to the unit's small size, panning effects across the two main channels lake the same wall factor. The S50A lakes a subwoofer, making it difficult to push low frequencies. Explosions lake strength and depth, 
spacecraft engine sounded flat, and the S-58 cannot produce pleasing lows. Many will find the S-58's performance decent enough for what it is, but if you want a cinematic experience, acquire the extra subwoofer. The HW S-58 offered three music playback choices, Bluetooth, USB, or HDMI to use the TV as a player. For our review, we used a micro USB adapter and FLAC music files on the USB port. The center channel aided with vocals, and the S58 conveyed their intensity and emotions. Stereo panning effects were noticeable but not in your face, and sound imaging was good but not amazing. The soundbar struggles with bass-heavy performances, and some songs lacked soul and emotional impact. The S58 could keep the beat moving, but it couldn't delve deep in the lows of heightened the experience. We tried classical, jazz, heavy metal, rock, and electronic for the evaluation, and while we weren't impressed, the S58 didn't fail in any of them either. If the bass was better, we would be more impressed. As we have said many times, $200 won't offer you a jaw-dropping hi-fi experience. The HW S58 is the kind of soundbar you want to put some music on and relax without worrying about the audio quality. If you don't have unrealistic expectations, it will give you hours of music delight. Closing our review, we can state that the Samsung HW S58 is great for anyone searching for a tiny, easy-to-handle soundbar that also offers expansion options. At $200, this soundbar is good entry point. What do you think about this video? Do let us know down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video and want to hear from us again, be sure to hit the subscribe button before you go.